This one was a real tricky project. I mean, you know, you, you have a man in a bat suit, and even though it's based on a comics, it was, it's a, there's a lot of exploration to try to make something like this work. Remember, your bird shall have no other wings but that of a bat. Surprisingly, the inspiration for Batman came from the words and drawings of Renaissance artist Leonardo da Vinci. At the age of 13, Batman creator Bob Kane came across da Vinci's designs for a flying machine, and as Kane later said, there it was for me, the Batman. Lieutenant, is there a six-foot bat in Gotham City? On the 50th anniversary of the comic book Batman, a motion picture is about to be released starring Jack Nicholson as the Joker and Michael Keaton as Batman. The star of this movie is truly a movie item. It really is the phantom of the opera of the 80s. The pen is truly mightier than the sword. You get the, the excitement and visual qualities from a comic book, but you also get a little bit more depth. Vicki Vale. Hi. Bruce Wayne. And what do you do for a living? The year-long production of Batman was shot in London, where producers spent millions of dollars constructing a fully functional six-block Gotham City set at Pinewood Studios. The scoring was also done in London. Producer John Peters was there to oversee the dramatic underscore of a film about his childhood hero. For me, Batman was a character. He and Elvis Presley were my two favorite characters. It's a shame he couldn't have played. Yeah, and actually, they're very similar, uh, although... Uh, they um, had funny costumes yeah. that they wore. <laughs> I remember saying to the people at Warner Bros. for years, Batman, Batman, they look at me like I was a little peculiar, you know? How are you going to do a movie with a guy running with a cape and he has no superpower and he doesn't have kryptonite and he can't fly and you know, all those different things? And then... <clears throat> are they ready to do this? Are they ready to go? Okay. <laughs> no, but they're not ready for us. They're not ready for us. <laughs> I understand. I think it was a, this was a very difficult picture to make. It was very hard for all of us. And then, um, you know, we met Tim and... Uh, you know, uh, it just started to fall into place. One. In the early stages of the deal, one of the most frustrating roadblocks was finding the director with the right vision. Producer John Peters finally got a lucky break. Have it behind you like this, are like this? Come on. on the surface, it may seem unusual that $40 million in one of the biggest movie deals of the year was entrusted to 29-year-old Tim Burton. On one hand, it's quite scary because you're, you're dealing with this money. On the other hand, it's like a bunch of kids, you know, tying capes around their neck and jumping off the roof. Tim Burton had already directed two successful Warner Brothers pictures. He had just endeared himself to studio executives when he turned the $13 million budget of Beetlejuice into an $80 million blockbuster. It was Warner Brothers who had given Burton his first break, and now they were willing to roll the dice on him as director of Batman. The only person left to convince was producer John Peters. Mark Canton, who's the president of Worldwide Production at Warner Brothers, kept talking about this young, inventive, crazy, talented kid who he was working with. And I kept saying to him, I want to meet him, I want to meet him. You know, it made me uncomfortable because I was always the crazy kid and I'm not the kid anymore. You would never... When they signed Burton, I think I like they hired his imagination and track record. What they were soon to learn about was his tremendous ability to perform under the extreme pressures of a complicated production and the presence of a multi-million dollar cast. Yeah, Batman is a huge challenge to anybody, the way, the way they chose to do it, you know. And, um, yeah, it was, it was an enormous undertaking. I mean, the kid, you know, I mean, he's kind of known, you know, for his, like, pallor, you know what I mean? The kid, like, known to be pale. He went past pale. He almost went to transparent, this kid. He was working so hard. I just thought every day was his last day. He couldn't, didn't think he could stand up another, to another one, and he just... But I think the thing Tim actually likes, without even knowing, is that he likes those frayed wires, you know. He, that's where it starts to happen, you know. And, you know, His whole look, you know, his whole 
hair and his whole look is, is about that. You know? Again, Michael, it, it's an, it, it, it's, it's, what you're suggesting is an interesting thing because you don't want it to look like too, you want it to look like you're wounded, but you're, you're still going for it. Do you know what I mean? They out of the light. Tim Burton I would work with any day, any time he called me, any day of the... I would just... I'd start tomorrow morning on a film that he... if he had something something to do with it, with never having read it. Because I, I came in on this rather late, and um, I met him, and instantly the two of us sort of took off flying together, like two bats. <laughs> now that the director was in place, the producers needed someone to fill the bat suit. Candidates included Mel Gibson, Charlie Sheen, and Pierce Brosnan. TV Batman Adam West was not in the running. Very odd. This could be a plot to separate us. He was offered a cameo appearance in the film, but declined. What a terrible way to go, go. Oh, 